great blessing in sharing with what our children got to experience at Camp Awanata. They traveled a long distance to go to Camp Awanata. Thank you, Charlie. I got your attention. I appreciate that. And we're going to get to experience this. So Miss Kimberly, Miss Robin, and they just everybody, if the children will come on up, we're going to look forward to this experience with them. Would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who oh, the sun sets free. Who oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I. A slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, who is free in me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my
statements and then we'll let you anybody that wants to do a testimony we'll let you come up okay during camp we talked about the I am statements from the book of John and we are going to go over each one of those so I'm going to ask y'all to stand some of them have motions and some don't so what was the first one Jesus. see if you remember Jesus, Jesus is, is the light of the world and full of sin and darkness. So that I am was that Jesus is the light. The next one is, I remember. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Good. All right, y'all do that one. Jesus provides for you that what we Never provide for yourself. That one's a tongue twister. Okay, the next one is bread of life. Then we had the good shepherd. Good. We did not have a motion, so we'll just repeat that. I am the good shepherd. All right, and then we learned another one. Just I am the great I am. I am who. I say I am, and that one was Jesus is God. Good. All right, and the next one, I am the door. Jesus is the door. All right, and I am the resurrection and the life, and that one was Jesus gives life. <laughs> Okay. All right, and what's the next one? Let's see if y'all remember. Something that grows. Okay, I am the true vine. The last one is I am the way and the life. Okay, and there was no motions for that one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's the things that we learned at camp. I'm going to go ahead and let you do your testimony, and then we'll do our awards. Okay, so this year was by far my favorite year of camp. I had so much fun this year, and it was so fun getting to hang out with all of my friends at once. This is my third year of camp, although some campers pranked us and said that two of the girls from her, their grief went missing. But it was so funny because we were actually out there looking and then we figured it out, they pranked us. And it was so fun, we played bow and arrow tag and it was just really fun. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Is there anybody else that wants to say anything? If not, okay, we'll move on. All right, so, Miss Robin, do you want to say anything? I have a story of paint. She is going to say something. I knew she was. It has a story. has a story. We had a really good year this year at camp. Um, we had 14 children. We had five girls and nine boys. Um, so it was quite an adventure. Um, we were talking about it this week, and I thought that Edie might say something about camp. But So since she's not going to, I'm going to tell you what she told me. She told me that she had a really good time at camp this year and how lucky we are to have this camp so close to us and to have a camp that we trust 
And I just, gives me chills. Um, I just thought that was real important that a child her age recognizes that, you know, we've got this great resource right here and also that, that the parents trust in this camp and being able to send their children there means a lot. And what a good job Mr. Steve and Miss Shannon do in running the camp and Ethan does with the program. So I, I, since she's not gonna say it, I decided I would. Okay, so every year we, um, the, one of the awards we choose is the one who is the most like Jesus award. And that goes to Summer Clayton. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick your fingers in here that your mama did so that you won't lose them, okay? We did not get her initials on her bottle. So this is for that and here's your certificate, okay. Okay, this was just sort of an impromptu thing, but we had somebody that came very prepared if, in the medical area, and that was Rachel Anderson. She gets the Florence Nightingale Award, and here's you some sparkly band-aids. We had a lot of blood this year. We did. But y'all need to forget that by next year because, uh, but nobody died, so we were all good. I think that comes with having nine boys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was mostly the boys. We only had one girl that bled. I think that was it. Okay. Uh, you bled. Well, I missed that one. Okay. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Shh. All right. And this year we made certificates for everybody who actually went to camp so and there's a little saying i'm not going to say probably all on them but anyway first one is elijah samford this was his first year camping with us so elijah one of his things was when are we going swimming <laughs> the next one is colin laws colin laws was our leprechaun because we turned around and he disappeared <laughs> And this was his first year camping. Holly Jennings, this was his first year. And I named him Little Dynamite because if he gets upset about something, he goes off and goes, uh. Then he walks <laughs> off the corner all by himself. I would really hate to have to light that little spark, but. <laughs> Jeremiah Laws, this was his second year. Jeremiah is our mud dauber king. They found he and, and Edie, they were the cohorts in finding this mud hole that was this gray looking icky stuff. And I had a picture and I accidentally deleted it where they were covered in it, but they got that one. Jaden Laws. This was his second year and he's the road runner. And I'll let him explain that one. Elijah Jennings, and this was his third year of camping. He's the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Edie Kubler, this is her third year of camping. She's the Mud Dauber Queen. <laughs> Summer Clayton, I think this is her fourth year, and she is coming out of her comfort zone. She actually, um, she and her cousin sang at the talent show. So, uh, and she, when she did, she wore this shirt that said, uh, introverts unite. unite. Introverts unite. And we're here, we're uncomfortable, and we wanna go home. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was really neat that she got up there and did the talent show. Rachel Anderson. Rachel Anderson, who does not like to play any games, especially her comment was when we were going to talk about archery tag, I don't like projectiles. <laughs> well, she ended up playing and played three rounds, so she got archery tag queen. <laughs> Zane Ward. I had a couple of things. Yeah, I like this, this is his his fourth year and actually I think Rachel this was your fourth year yeah it was so you were there the very first year so um, 
Zane was a couple of things, but I put on it, where is my, because he always is leaving stuff everywhere. His other one is, he is a photo bomber. <laughs> Jordan Gibbs, where are you? All right, Jordan Gibbs. I gave her happy dancing feet. This is her fourth year camping, and she won second place in the talent show, Clogging. Lila Kugler. Lila's fourth year of camping, and her nickname here is Grace, because she is so graceful. Jacob Risk is not here. I called him Mr. Pool. That was his fourth year of camping. I'll give you that. And then Ethan Risk, accident prone. He got hurt before we even got to camp. So he was already there though. And then I think he got hurt the next day. And last but not least, all these people that come over and help. I could not do camp without Robin. So Robin, this is for you. Thank you. Jack, where are you? Come on up here. Jack came over and stayed two nights, and the, the second night was sort of last minute, so I appreciate him. Casey Kubler. Come on down, Casey. Casey came over and stayed one evening with us to, in Miss Robin's place where she had to be somewhere else. Thank you, Miss Casey. She's my right hand lady all the time. All right, the next one is Danny Wright. Danny came and spent the night with the boys. So, if any of you guys next year want to take a vacation week to build? Lives of kids, be welcome to do that. You're welcome to do that. Come on down here, Andrew. I told Andrew I'd try not to embarrass him too much, but he came and spent the night one night with Joey. Andrew, 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 Okay, we look forward to doing this next year. Um, we do have a wonderful group of kids, and it is my joy and pleasure to work with them. I love each and every one of them. And uh, so pray for our children, for those who don't know Christ yet. I know that seeds were planted this week, and uh, our goal is for them to know the great I am, that he is the good shepherd in their lives. So um, thank you all, everybody, and we will be back next year. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Matthew 26 today, as we prepare our hearts to receive the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we do this, of course, when we come to the Lord at this day, we examine ourselves, we examine our hearts, we look and say, God, I have sinned here Forgive me, help me to turn, help me to repent of this sin. Lord, I examine here and I, I, I'm seeking you in this, God. Keep strengthening me to walk in this way. Lord, if, if I'm hurting, you know, you may be hurting and you say, God, I just need a special touch from you. Lord, help me to walk through this time. All of those things we examine in our lives today as we proclaim the death of Jesus as the only way of salvation, the only way of our personal individual salvation, the only way that anyone anywhere in the world might be saved. Amen? There we go. Matthew 26 depicts one of the, the last nights Jesus spent on earth. And I want us to look at three parts of this passage all the way from Matthew 26 verse 17 all the way to verse 29 and see these three truths that the scripture shares with us to prepare our hearts for receiving the Lord's Supper today. 
Join with me, if you would, in uh, looking at Matthew 26, 17 through 19 to begin with. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I am to keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when we come together today, our first truth is to see that what Jesus celebrated and instituted, basically giving us and fulfilling the promises of Jeremiah and Ezekiel of the new covenant, that we would no longer be related to Him through law, or the law of the Old Testament, or the regulations, but that His blood, as we read earlier, would become the covenant, the way, the promise of God, that by which we would know God and relate to Him. So you see something tremendous happening here. And the good news is what? There is no further covenant to come. This is the last one. Jesus' covenant in His blood is the last one. Whereas in the Old Testament we had what I would call the Edenic covenant in Eden. You know, don't touch the tree. Don't eat from the fruit. If you do, you're going to die. Guess what we did? I didn't do it. Adam and Eve did it. You would have done the same thing had you been there and so would I. Okay? They perfectly represented what we would do. Then there was Moses, the Sinai covenant, right? You've got the, uh, the covenant of the God not destroying the earth with water again in Noah. You've got the Davidic covenant. All of these covenants came through the Old Testament and they culminate in this covenant, this promise. A covenant in the Word of God is a promise. And thank God they're promises from God, right? Because, you know, if I promise you something it's pretty easy for me to let you down. You know what I'm saying? If you promise me something, it's pretty easy for you to let me down, right? You know what I decided to do? Just not make promises. And that's biblical because why? James said, don't say I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. He says, Lord willing, if that comes... We'll go and do this or do that. But it, everything is Lord willing. I can't promise to, you know, I could promise my wife to say a lifetime of faithfulness, but I don't know how long that lifetime might be, right? So, God can truly promise because He knows all of the future. And when we look at each other or we look at life or we look at the world or we look at the culture and we say, this isn't fair and this lets me down and, and you just, I'm just going through a hard time, preacher. I'm, that's going to be life under the sun for now. But the promise of God is what? The covenant, the promise of God is that will end. Jesus' blood saves us from sin. Jesus' blood institutes what will come to be a brand new order of the world. Amen? Where there will be no more mourning, crying, pain, getting up at 4 a.m. to go to a job that you might not like. Those will be over. Jesus said, let's eat the Passover. What in the world is the Passover? Well, that's where we must look to the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. And we see that when the children of God, uh, the Israelites, were enslaved in Egypt, God brought plague after plague after plague upon the Egyptians to show, him, show them His greatness to show them that God is in charge of everything. He brought blood in the water, flies, plagues, locusts, darkness, all of the things that God created and is in complete control of. He unleashed those wonders upon the Egyptians and the tenth plague was the plague to kill the firstborn. Unless... There was the blood of the Lamb applied to the doorposts 
of the house. And in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul tells us that we have Jesus as our Passover lamb. For you see, the only ones who will be saved and spend eternity with Jesus are those who have had the blood of Christ applied to their hearts. Not those who just know about Jesus or not those who can recite a catechism or not those who just have heard about Jesus or, or been around Jesus-y type people, but those who have a personal relationship with the blood of Christ applied to their lives, their heart. You know how much you love children. You know what, when we get the children up here, you know what I notice? Everybody smiles a whole lot more than when I'm preaching. <laughs> That's okay. I smile more then than when I'm preaching. I, I watch myself on the camera just because I thought I should. And I get up there and say, you know, I, I thought, I didn't smile once in that whole 30 minutes. And then I said, and I make these goofy facial expressions. And I said, I make them over and over. And if I was looking at me, I wouldn't want to sit there and look at that. I don't know how I like, I think we ought to go back to cassette tapes. <laughs> or just CDs, the video, I, I don't know about that. Imagine a firstborn child dying But the blood of the Lamb preserved the life. And the only way for your eternal soul to be preserved is the blood of Jesus Christ. And this Passover supper, he reinterpreted the Old Testament regulation of celebrating this Passover. So every Easter we are celebrating the final Passover supper, the one that Jesus instituted until he comes again. Do this in remembrance of me, as often as you do it, but one day we will not take this any longer, will we? It was a Passover meal. Jesus himself now fulfills the Passover uh, celebration or festival of the Old Testament. The second part of the verses, look at verses 20 to 25. Now when evening had come, he was reclining at the table with the twelve disciples. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you that one of you will betray me. And being grieved deeply, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. And the Son of Man is to go, just as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been good for that man if he had not been born. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. And he said to him, You have said it yourself. As Jesus displayed this Passover meal that he was to become the embodiment of and fulfill the whole Passover ceremony of the Old Testament, these verses give us a grand display of God's omniscience. Now I know that may sound like a funny word. It is. How often do we go around saying that word? But it means God knows everything. Okay? Omni all Chance or science, kind of the Latin word scientia, where we get science for knowledge. All knowledge, all knowing is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that makes grace much more amazing because Jesus knows everything about each one of us, warts and plagues and how bad your feet stink and everything, and He loves you still. There's not a one of us in here who could get good enough to deserve the love of God. Even with as sweet as some of you folks are, most of you folks are. I got to say most because I'm included in those folks, okay? 
So I can't say everybody. Our sweetness, our compassion, our love, our hearts are still wicked and deceitful and we're often self-centered still, aren't we? And perhaps secretly self-righteous as we looked at a couple of weeks back. But you know what? Jesus' blood, His fulfillment of the Passover is great enough to save us from our own self-righteousness. It's great enough to save us from whatever. God put a couple of murderers into the ministry. Moses and Paul. Sometimes we forget that, right? Because we'd think, I mean, you, you just, you're a murderer. God, what else can God do with you? I and mean, I'm certainly not advocating murder. But I am saying God has used those who have murdered for His great glory in Scripture. So don't go out of here and say, Dr. Pete said, I'm murdering, God will use me. No, 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 wait. It just goes to show you how great the grace of God is. And it's not just great back then. It's great for whatever need you have today. It's great enough for whatever need I have today. His omniscience. Jesus displayed His all-knowing saying, One of you will betray me. We could spend hours looking at this passage, but don't worry those who have roasts in the oven. We will not. Because when you think of the sadness of Judas' life, Judas fulfilled a great purpose of God, and God knew that all the time. Right? Does it not say right here, the Son of Man is to go just as it is written of him. And part of how it's written of him to be betrayed took another human being to betray him. And in this we not only see God knowing all, but a glorious display of God's sovereignty that I can't fully comprehend, but that God had Judas on the earth to betray Jesus. You say, do you believe Judas went to hell? Yes. But God had a great plan. And I can't fully comprehend. I don't know everything God... If, if I've ever made you think I know what God knows, forgive me. But the good news is, the betrayal of Christ is over. And even right after Judas betrayed Jesus, guess what one of the chief apostles did? I can identify with him, not just because we have the same name, but we kind of have the same personalities at times. Peter, he went out and denied that he knew Jesus. And yet his denial and betrayal was not unto death as Judas's was. Right? Praise God. But it shows that God is completely sovereign over everything that's happening in the Passover. In our Lord's Supper today, He is leading us and showing us that. And the third thing that we see is that this was a glorious picture of what Christ has done for us. And may each of us never get over this fact. It's so easy when you hear something over and over and over, or you get so used to the gospel, and you get so used to the fact that Jesus died for you, that it kind of can become commonplace. Parents... Have you ever had that time when you said, my children don't appreciate how good they have it? Now, you might have said it like that, or you might have been smiling. My children just don't appreciate how good they have it. However it came out in your life. <laughs> I 
Is that not a mirrored picture of what we sometimes look at with Jesus? And we fail to appreciate and we fail to comprehend the greatness of His grace and we... You know what all we can do at that point? God, forgive me. And God, work in my heart. Bring together in my heart an amazement of how great your grace is. We sing about amazing grace. But it's another thing to constantly stay amazed at amazing grace every minute of every day. Verses 26 to 29 that I read earlier. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a, a blessing, he broke it and said, This is my, take and eat, this is my body. We see that his body was broken. He fulfilled all the sacrificial system of Leviticus. He would fulfilled all the Passover and Exodus. He's fulfilling all the sacrifices in Leviticus. And I'm th think, aren't you glad you don't have to sacrifice sheep? Peter would be after every one of us if we were in the Old Testament times. And not the Peter I'm a part of, people for the eating of tasty animals, the other Peter. That is a joke too. There's no real organization like that. But if you're a vegan, I love you. I hope you'll love me. I just hate you're missing out. His body was broken as that blameless blemishless sheep died upon that altar his body was poured out broken whipped the skin hanging off his back and when he had taken a cup he gave thanks and he said drink from it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of Sins. His blood was being poured out for many. So the juice that we drink represents the blood of Christ. Like the blood of that animal that would be shed. But this, his death, was a once for all. As Peter said, Christ died once for all. The just, the one who is completely righteous for the unrighteous, that's all of us, that we might be brought to get saved and brought together to God. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. The Word of God tells us, and thank God that Jesus gives us this example. So all we are left to do is to say, glory to the Lamb of God. And God, may my life reflect <clears throat> your glory, your love, your compassion. So today we must examine our hearts, confess our sin, set ourselves apart afresh and anew to live for His glory by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and remember His death until He comes, and we will all hopefully echo the words of John the Revelator, Amen, come Lord Jesus. Because we're really prepared for Him to come. May we bow in prayer in a time of self-examination, confession, repentance, adoration and praise and, and worship of God. O oh Lord, you are wonderful and holy and awesome and hallowed be your name. Lord Jesus, help us to confess anything that does not glorify you, has not glorified you in our lives. Lord, 
grant us your sustaining and growing grace that we'll be more like Jesus. Today, when we leave, and tomorrow morning, early as well, Lord, I pray that you would accept our prayers now and make our hearts ready to receive this covenant that you have told us to observe because we are related to you through your body being broken and blood being poured out, Jesus. May you be glorified in this time in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.